Innovation has been at the heart of Nestle since the late 1800s when pharmacist Henri Nestle created a baby formula for milk, wheat flour, and sugar. By the early 1900s, his company was exporting chocolate, and following a merger with the Anglo-Swiss Condensed Milk Company, the business continued to grow over the decades, expanding its global footprint and product portfolio into coffee, ice cream, dried and frozen foods. Today, Nestle holds a portfolio of more than 2,000 brands, with factories in more than 70 countries, and its products appear in shelves in more than 180. To navigate ever-changing landscapes, Nestle invests heavily into research and development and has a global headcount of more than 4,000 in R&D alone, working to ensure its products are serving the different needs of consumers in multiple markets. In this special edition of The Edge, we follow the process from scientific research to taste testing and product packaging, which is all overseen by Isabel bureau France, Nestle's head of research, who I met here in Lausanne. Isabel, thank you so much for having CNBC here at Nestle. Uh, talk to us about what happens at this site. This is really the center of uh, scientific discoveries where innovation starts. Um, this is very centralized here for Nestle, and we mainly focus our expertise on five areas. So how the food is impacting health from a nutrition standpoint. How do we develop analytical methods to understand what's in our product? Also, how do we look at agricultural science, packaging science, and of course, our food technologists looking at technologies to produce food products. So the way we are organized is we centralize the research here and then work hand in hand with the different centers that are focusing on product categories and using those discoveries to translate into a product across brands and across uh, geographies. Sustainability is at the heart of um, so many uh, businesses. It's a key focus for so many sectors. How heavily is it impacting the agenda here? It is impacting heavily the agenda and at a different level. We look at sustainability all along the value chain. So for example, developing plant-based product is one aspect, but the product needs to be tasty, needs to be nutritious, needs to be affordable. So today we are developing a lot of innovation around plant-based. We also look at, from an agricultural science point of view, the carbon footprint impact of some of the raw material we use, being dairies raw material, being plant raw material, coffee, cocoa, pulses, but also looking at the sustainability aspects of the packaging. Mm. You know, how do we move from, uh, for example, plastic to paper? And, and there is different constraint there to take into consideration. So it's really holistic all along the value chain and we try to tackle any element that can help us to achieve those sustainability aspects. Will there be a day when we are in an entirely plant-based food world? I think we need to leave the choice to the consumer. So our role is really to offer a full range of plant-based products that are adapted to local needs, but also to personal nutritional needs. How do the teams here work with regional headquarters of Nestle so they can respond to different consumer demands in different parts of the world? So the way we work is to have common knowledge, common understanding in deep science. And then we combine different expertise to go up to the local taste and the local needs. So if I give you an example on plant-based, we start with the expertise on understanding how do we breed? How do we choose the variety of raw material? Then we look at the nutritional value of the recipes. Then we look at, with our food technologist, how do we produce this product? And then we have our culinary experts that are going to be involved to fine tune the recipes exactly based on the local taste, local needs, and we will end up this chain of innovation with choosing the right packaging.
As part of its sustainability strategy, Nestle reduced the total volume of its product packaging by around 900,000 tons between 2020 and 2022, thanks to the team's work here at the Nestle Institute of Packaging Sciences. This is where we look at packaging material, where we screen any types of packaging materials. We focus on four areas. First of all, how to decrease the amount of packaging or being kind of packaging free with alternative delivery system that you see here. Also to simplify any types of plastic. It's very often multi-layer and therefore not recyclable. Uh, we also focus on uh, what we say paperization. How do we move from different types of packaging to paper? and ultimately also explore uh, packaging around biodegradable uh, aspects. So this is what we do here. You see the labs there where we uh, do a lot of analysis, checking the capacity of our packaging to protect uh, our product, uh, being powders, being liquids, being uh, different geographies, different uh, climate, etc. So this is the really whole uh, value chain we, we are looking at in those labs. What are some of the biggest obstacles when it comes to developing new packaging? So we need a packaging that is safe for food. We need a packaging that is protecting the food, running in our existing mm. lines in, in the factories, also convenient for the consumers. And we need also a, a packaging that is resistant to any types of climate, geographies, transportation, etc. So you see the whole range of constraints that we have that are very specific to food. Why is it so important that new packaging is able to fit into existing systems? Because we have more than 400 factories running and so you need to use your existing assets to manufacture product, otherwise you would need to redo everything which is, mm. which is not feasible. If we think about paper, for example, you see here different examples. And of course, it will be different based also on the product that is inside. So if you think about Nescafe, which is a very sensitive powder to humidity, because you know, to dissolve, it needs to absorb water. You need also a paper that is protecting the powder differently than for Smarties, for example. Or if you think about climate, so this is a Cerelac product that we launch in uh, West Africa, mm -hmm. where the climate is pretty hot and humid, and therefore you need a paper packaging that is going to protect the product much more. When you look ahead to the future of packaging, what do you think are going to be the main themes? I think paper has to uh, be the main things uh, because it's something that is available, that is biodegradable, and we know that uh, we can start working with paper. Uh, we can also think about recyclable plastic, but for that we would need infrastructure in different countries that are there to recycle the product. Mm. And if you look today around the world, we are not there, right? So even if we do um, products that are recyclable, we need also the infrastructure right. there to be uh, recyclable. We are exploring biodegradable, but it's the same, you need biodegradable infrastructure uh, to compost mm. your product ultimately. Thank you for watching, and for more from CNBC International, just hit the subscribe button.